All right, uh, so uh, Dina, Reed, Evan, Jim, um, we're going to be recording this discussion and posting it to YouTube on the Collegeville uh, channel. I just want to make sure you're aware of that and you're okay with that. Yes. Yes. You nod yes or no. Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right, good. Um, all right, then let's get started. Um, uh, hi, my name is Mike Carew. I'm uh, one of the organizers of the Collegeville Workshop on Scientific Software with an emphasis on developer productivity this year. And I have the great privilege of, of talking with the uh, Software Engineering and Research Department at Sandia National Laboratories. Uh, this is a relatively new department uh, focused on, uh, the, as the title of the group says, Software Engineering and Research. Uh, for the computational scientists, computer scientists uh, in uh, the Center for Computing Research at Sandia National Laboratories. Um, to get started, uh, the, we, I'm going to ask the manager, Dina Vigil, uh, who is here with us, to give a, a bit of the history and overview of the department. So, uh, Dina, uh, actually, let's, before we do that, let's introduce everybody. Thank you. All right. So, Dina, why don't you get started? Uh, Okay, my name introduction. is Oh, I'm sorry. My name is no, Dina Vigil, and I am the manager of the department software engineering and research. Thank you. Oh, very good. Uh, Reed, you're next on my column here or row, so you want to go next? There. I'm uh, my name is Reed Malevich and I am a mem I'm a staff member and a software engineering researcher within the department. Very good. Uh, Evan my name is Evan Harvey, and I am a scientific programmer within the department. Very good. Welcome. Jim? My name is Jim Willenbring, and I am also a member of Dina's department. All right. Very good. Uh, welcome, everybody. So now let's get started with the uh, uh, history and overview of the department. Dina? Um, so the history of SIMS began probably early uh, 2010 uh, timeframe when our center recognized the need for software engineering support for the projects, uh, for the research and projects that we were doing in our Center for Computing Research. And um, we started uh, very modestly with very few people who were software practitioners um, providing support to the multiple projects. And this effort grew. Um, we started seeing that the, the work that we were doing was having value within the different uh, projects. And we, we came to a place where we were um, very, uh, we, we had some, some synergies. We started recognizing synergies across projects and, and learning how we might be able to leverage uh, multiple requirements uh, or requirements for multiple projects to actually build common resources and common tools that not only the projects that needed them um, could use, but also projects that didn't have funding for software engineering support. So we moved along, uh, we, we started uh, seeing a lot of benefit for software engineering. And at that time, we had an advocate in, in you, Mike, uh, to say that not only did we need uh, this, this component of practitioning, but, but we would benefit from a research component for understanding how to develop sustainable software, uh, software engineering in, in research software or uh, scientific software. And so those two ideas merged together um, and really were um, uh, appealing to the senior staff in our center and that led to the creation of a new department. Very good, very good. Thank you. And, and just to clarify, SEM stands for what? Software engineering. I'm sorry. No. It's software, no, no. Uh, software engineering maintenance and support. Very good. And so that was the effort that started in 2010. That was kind of the foothold uh, in the center, right, for for a focus on this kind of work. Yes. Very good. And and now now that the department, it's been around for what two years? Is that right? Uh, I, I'm I'm not very good with time stamps. About two years. Yes. We're All we're right. about our year and a half time frame. Okay, very good. Um, uh, and then, uh, and so what's the scope of the department today, would you say? Well, uh, we're still trying to decide long term what our scope is, oh. but right now we are managing software engineering support uh, across multiple um, um, 
areas. And so we, we basically provide uh, the, the infrastructure, like hardware infrastructure for tools that are necessary um, and the system, administra system administration support that goes along with that. Uh, we provide uh, traditional software development uh, also, as you noted with our um, guest here, uh, scientific software development, HPC yeah. software development. Um, and we do a lot of um, software engineering uh, infrastructure support as well for uh, projects. And as mentioned uh, before, we're, we've added a research component to this. All right, very good. Thank you, Dina. Evan, maybe I'll move to you next and, and uh, ask you. So you're relatively new to the department. Uh, is, is that right? And then, uh, and, and what are some of the kinds of activities that you engage in uh, to work with teams in the center? Um, so I work um, primarily on DevOps work and um, scientific um, programming, um, particularly in supporting uh, math kernels, portable performant math kernels on HPCs. Yeah, very good, very good. And and uh, and and how long have you been in the department? I started uh, October of uh, 2019, so about right, nine months. Good. Yeah. All right, very good, very good. Um, Jim, maybe I'll move to you next. Um, what are some of the activities that you have going on uh, related to the department? Um, I. I lead a software infrastructure effort for a project called Trilinos. And uh, in that effort, we stand up a lot of testing and we um, meet a lot of stakeholder needs in terms of documentation and websites and software releases and things of that nature. I'm also involved in the Exascale computing project under the software technologies area, I have an SDK software development kit project where we are working to package together a wide variety of scientific software across many areas from math libraries to uh, data and viz tools, uh, other kinds of tools as well as programming models and runtimes and make that uh, software available in an interoperable way uh, and targeting the uh, upcoming pre-exascale and exascale platforms. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, and, and Reed, um, you're, you started off as a postdoc, right? right. And, uh, I, I started and, off and, as a postdoc. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and then now you're a full-fledged staff member. I'm uh, glad to hear that. So, so what, um, yeah, and so uh, what are some of the things that you are doing as a part of the department? Well, uh, it's, a, it's a mix. Uh, some of my day-to-day -day work is uh, development activities and programming activities to support uh, our customers. I also offer consulting work uh, with teams and individuals to try to pair them with resources, answer questions they may have about software engineering. Um, we have, I'm part of a team as well as part of the Exascale Computing Project, like Jim, I work with the Productivity and Sustainability Improvement Planning Team, and we work one-on-one -on -one with scientific software teams across the Exascale Computing Project in order to meet, help them meet their productivity goals, right? Through better tools, yeah. through better methods. Uh, and in doing so, we also are cultivating a program of research in this area, trying to derive more generalizable insights about how scientific software development gets done and how we can help folks do it better, right? And achieve more with their, with their software work. Oh, very good. Um, one of the appealing things I heard you describe is uh, this kind of vertical integration of, of workflows and, and skills and backgrounds. How have you seen that uh, play out in the you know the first year and a half or so of the department's existence? Uh, and maybe I'll start with Dina, if you don't mind. Um, well, I think uh, the Collegeville workshop is a great example of how this has played out. So if you look at the, I think we have uh, nine white papers that were submitted by eight yeah. staff in our in our department, and um, I believe that. Um, of the eight staff people, only four are used to actually publishing papers or writing about their experiences, and the other four have been traditionally uh, software practitioners. And so this is a, a very new activity for them 
I think one of the reasons that we even got the number of people to do this is because uh, one of the key areas that I've been trying to build is in teaming and making sure that we're an integrated um, group of people. We meet regularly for multiple uh, activities um, from department uh, needs as, as well as best practices, um, discussions that we have on a regular basis. And so we've become trusted colleagues with one another and we really respect the work that the other team members are doing. So when this call came up, uh, a number of people who would otherwise have not been willing to actually write papers um, rose to the challenge and, and actually participated. So I think that's maybe a, a, a really good example of the vertical integration that we're seeing uh, yeah. from practicing to, to research. Very good, thank you, thank you. How about others, anyone else have a comment in that direction? Uh, yeah, so. Go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. Uh, I, I was just going to say that I think getting other people involved in this was was a really great thing. We were trying to encourage people to get involved, trying to get people to dip their toe in the research end of things. One yeah. of the things that we've been working towards is having everyone be involved in this vertical integration. That doesn't mean that everyone has to be writing conference papers all the time and and attending conferences and this and that. But it does mean at least capturing experiences and and maybe being uh, guinea pigs for one of Reed's experiments or something like that. Um, <laughs> because, because there are lots of opportunities to get involved in the research thrust of the department, even for people who don't want to spend a great deal of time writing papers and and trying to give people an opportunity, feel that out a little bit, see what they like, see what they don't. Um, I, I think this is a great opportunity for a lot of people. Yeah, very good, very good. Reed, go ahead. Um, yeah. I, I do have an example in our day-to-day -day work uh, that came to mind in previous conversations, if you'd like for me to share it, about like how research plays into our, our typical work as a department, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So to give you one example, our team right now is looking to develop robust continuous integration and delivery pipelines for our customers because being able to build and test and deploy scientific software, that reduces time to science. And we think that's very critical. That's, that is, of course, a very complex engineering challenge, but it's also a research challenge. So there's a number of questions that come up. How do we accommodate teams with large scale testing needs or combinatorial builds? What kinds of automated analyses might improve confidence in the systems under test? Or uh, does deployability uh, interact positively with reproducibility? Or, or how can we adapt our solutions to make them fit our customers, our scientists' workflows? And those are all research questions, right? And on that front, uh, to give you an example, we've been performing systematic, a systematic literature review to gather up the, be the best available evidence. And meanwhile, we are preparing to interview numerous scientific software teams uh, at multiple institutions to better understand their automation needs. So these activities, these research activities, they provide an immediate benefit because that informs our design decisions for these pipelines. But more than that, our hope is that we can derive some generalizable insights that would benefit not just Sandia, but the scientific community at large. And by publishing, by sharing what we know, our experiences, we're giving back to the community. Yeah, very good, very nice statement. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I, I mean, one observation or thought that occurred as you were describing it is I, I've talked to many other uh, academic researchers, other people working in software engineering research, and, and they seem to be in constant search for real problems to address. Absolutely. Right, and, and because they want their research to be relevant, yet, right? But, but here you have it, right? You know, right in your department, at your fingertips. Right, I would say absolutely. So I think that having Department 1424 within the uh, within Center 1400 gives us a very unique opportunity. We have so many different scientific software projects that we get to interact with, ranging from climate science to material science, you name it, right? It's a very, very diverse crowd. And between all of them, we are able to find cross-cutting solutions to satisfy their problems. And we have access to these developers, to these researchers, and by working with them, you know, in close coordination with them, we can try to find you know, solutions that actually work for this community ones that yeah. you know, can carry us forward and carry forward the scientific enterprise. Very to good. take Thank that one step much. further too, when we're yeah. trying to get those involved in our department who aren't frequently involved in research, 
uh, we've found that a lot of times people don't realize how interesting the work is that they're doing. Um, I remember a particular conversation with one of our department members before we formed the department, and, and he was telling me about how he's not really that interested in writing papers and the stuff that he does isn't really paper worthy anyway. And he had just spent the previous 20 minutes telling me about a borderline Herculean effort um, and almost unbelievable success story in upgrading the infrastructure for an older legacy project and integrating new software engineering approaches and much better testing into it. And I said, that, that is so publishable that yeah. you, so many people would be very interested in that story. And yeah. so these are, these are the things that are going on. And by having the researchers close to those people doing that work, I think it helps us to capture more of those stories. Yeah, and and I'm, I would like to follow up with what um, Jim just said, because I think one of the key uh, keys to having success in this area is, is this uh, growing team identity. We're starting to understand that alone, um, we're kind of maybe, uh, we're not as, as effective as we can be together. And so um, I, I think one of the things that I've seen in us uh, integrating with one another and really learning the, the work that the other team members are doing is we're, we're starting to appreciate where there are synergies and where we might um, inter interface with one another and really uh, build something new or, or do something new. And, and that's kind of something that hadn't had been missing before we became a department. I also think that um, over the course of the year and a half, I've seen our team members uh, really value their own contributions more than, than I had seen in previous years. So we see ourselves differently. Yeah, very nice. That is a very nice statement, nice observation. Thank you. Um, okay, let, let's, uh, let's wrap this up by maybe going around a bit and, and asking for any uh, last minute uh, 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 comments from people, observations. Maybe, Evan, if you don't mind, we can start with you. How's that? Yeah, I don't mind. Um, I was going to follow up to some um, comments that uh, Dina yeah. and, and uh, Reed and Jim had made. And, and I think um, being part of being a new member in this department, it's, it's been different in a good way. Um, we go to these uh, meetings where we discuss um, research practices and we talk about each other's work. And then we have the opportunity to go back to our teams and implement um, those ideas and learn from each other. And I think that that, that support group, but also that, that method of kind of disseminating that research in, in kind of this really natural way um, is something that uh, is really positive. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Nice observation. Jim? Uh, I wanted to extend just a little bit Dina's last comment about people being able to see the work that they're doing and find the synergies. I think having formed the department, one of the major advantages of that is that there's a person in Dina's position who can then find out about those synergies and, and really push on them and, and make something happen because of them. In the past, um, you know, you might see those synergies, but the opportunities to grab them and, and run with it in a sense weren't always there. And so I, I'm excited to see how this uh, progresses. Yeah, very good, thank you, yeah. Uh, Reed. All right, just uh, I wanted to add to, also to Dina's point about how we are able to understand each other's work and find, syner find synergies between our, you know, our different efforts. On the research front, what I would say is that I think research and practice are deeply, deeply interconnected. And we know that the best results come about when researchers and practitioners are able to work together, which is what our department is able to do because we're a hybrid department uh, composed of some people on the practitioning end and some people more on the research end. So our team on one hand provides products and services to all of our customers, right? On the other hand, we're also interested in improving in fundamental ways how software engineering gets done in our domain. Right? So when we talk about research, we're talking about applying the scientific method to improve the practice of engineering. And these, I think, the practice and the research, they go hand in hand. So when we're able to combine our, our practical experience, our knowledge of what our customers really need through that connection, and adding to that rigorous systematic investigation, that's what really enables us to solve real world problems. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's in that, that fusion, that combination, uh, I think that makes, is what makes it successful. Very good, thank you very much, Reed. Dina, last minute comments from you. Okay, um, I think I wanna talk a little bit about community. So we've talked a little bit about how our, our team coming together has developed a community and it's strengthened by the fact that we have research, um, research staff and, and software engineering um, practitioners. But I think our community, the fact that we have research staff who are connected to external communities that are doing research helps us to not be insular, uh, gives us the opportunity to do practice or to practice um, uh, solutions in our problem space, but also to look outward and not just inward for what we're doing um, internally to meet our customers' needs, but outward to see, well, what are other people doing? Uh, what are other people doing and how are they doing these things? So, so I feel like we have an opportunity uh, to, to really leverage the people who are doing research uh, to help us not be insular. Very good, excellent statement, thank you. Well, it's been a, a privilege to chat with all of you. Um, I, I'm very excited for this department. Um, very pleased to see the growth and the uh, 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 expansion of what all of you are able to do because of your collaborative effort, efforts. And so thank you very much for the conversation and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing your participation in the uh, workshop next week. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. Pleasure.